Hello, uh, my name is Miłosz. Uh, I'm a software developer in OK, uh, OK Poland. Uh, currently, I'm working uh, for uh, multiple customers as uh, AI consultant, machine learning consultant uh, with uh, Stream Group in a product that is uh, detecting commercials from Stream uh, in real time. In OK internal product, uh, Jumbo Lane that uh, is home automation with uh, real time uh, real time ai that is processing uh, processing uh, face uh, slit wet uh, and uh, detecting uh, detecting falls uh, also i'm a performance tester in c uh, change so uh, yeah that's uh, that's also one of my uh, my specialties uh, performance so that's uh, one of uh, the subjects i will uh, i will touch today uh, mobile device as a gate uh, to machine learning world, so how to utilize your mobile device in data flow of systems using machine learning. We have a natural order of miniaturization, so first uh, when, you are, uh, you, when you are developing some new product, uh, I think uh, you think uh, you, you need lots of uh, Lots of computation in uh, in AI area, so uh, it's natural that that uh, you you use a, a custom sub supercomputer. Uh, after this, we, we move to cloud, uh, like uh, Azure, uh, like uh, uh, like Amazon, and uh, uh, things like this. Uh, then. Uh, then we miniaturize our supercomputers as embedded, and now we are at final stage, uh, at final stage of uh, our evolution. So we are going mobile. So this is quite funny because uh, I was very, uh, very uh, against this idea to go with uh, AI uh, to mobile. And actually, uh, I thought that it is uh, almost impossible to, to create uh, deep learning models uh, on mobile phones. Uh, so uh, I was very surprised uh, when I saw uh, some recent Apple uh, achievements uh, and, uh, and uh, TensorFlow Lite achievements. Of course, uh, this is not so, so great uh, that, if, that, that it sounds like because uh, if you would like to, to generate quite nice uh, and accurate uh, AI models, you still need to rely on cloud or uh, custom supercomputers. So why, why I need uh, machine learning on my mobile? So machine learning, uh, w what is machine learning in this case? Because uh, currently we are using machine learning in multi multiple areas. So, for example, uh, like uh, previous speaker said, for high fre frequency trading, uh, those things are done cloud or uh, on supercomputers. Uh, for image processing, uh, like uh, face recognition, face detection, uh, some actions detection, uh, they are currently weak AI, because this is AI which is working for us, uh, not strong AI which is, has self-consciousness, is uh, currently used mostly to, to track us and spy us. So uh, the main reason why you would like to, to keep uh, your machine learning data on your phone is uh, <laughs> because the data are cur currency now. So they are very precious. Uh, and uh, you don't want to, to give your data to external providers. Of course, there are, uh, there are multiple other, uh, other things that uh, could improve your data flow with machine learning when, when you move to, uh, when you move to uh, mobile. Of course, you are able to save some internet connection limit on, uh, on your uh, customer device, but incoming 5G internet, so this won't be a problem anymore, probably. But 
for example, in the uh, Netherlands, there are still uh, people using uh, 10 megabits, uh, 10 megabits internet connection. So, uh, so this is still problem. Not in uh, low, uh, in low uh, developed countries, but in very, very uh, developed countries like Netherlands. So, uh, you also would uh, would like to be independent from internet connection because if you have some system that uh, that uh, is quite important for you so so uh, it is uh, solving some very important problem like uh, some health care or monitoring your uh, overall condition uh, you would like to not lose it uh, when when the internet stops so if your uh, machine learning algorithm is for example monitoring your heart rate because you are after a stroke or something like this you don't want to to lose this function functionality when uh, the internet is stopped of course uh, there's one the biggest reasons why you would like to move uh, move uh, machine learning to mobiles money this is uh, the main reason because uh, Cloud processing is very expensive. So, for example, uh, for example, Amazon uh, Amazon instance with uh, Volta 100, which is able to process uh, 6,000 frames per second on ResNet 50 model, it can cost up to uh, 50 bucks per day. So, this is 30,000 uh, more than 30,000 uh, per year. So, this is quite quite uh, expensive thing and six thousand frames is really small amount so you probably would like to, to move this to, to your client uh, to your client uh, device it also solves scaling problem the problem that uh, currently uh, mostly hitting uh, hitting most of blockchain technology scaling because too many uh, too many people want to do too many things on the same infrastructure uh, this is applicable also here. So, uh, so your uh, your uh, machine learning models are strictly stick to to what uh, what machine you have in cloud, or you need to to buy more uh, computational power. Two years ago, most of uh, those technology was uh, unreachable because uh, computational work power was so expensive that uh, most of those uh, most of those uh, algorithms was uh, way to the, the cost to benefits was uh, uh, was uh, no, not good so <laughs> it was quite quite uh, not good technology then you would wonder what what can you do on your mobile and uh, when I was working on this problem a few weeks ago, I was very surprised because you can use any model. Of course, there are some limitations. Uh, for example, ResNet uh, is uh, it's not maybe uh, impossible, but uh, I strongly recommend to not uh, use higher uh, ResNet with more layers than 50 because it's quite slow then. Uh, all inception models uh, works quite well. Uh, and there are multiple, uh, multiple architectures that uh, works very, very good with mobile. They are, they are uh, optimized strictly for mobiles. Uh, squeeze nets, shuffle nets, mobile nets, uh, all of those needs uh, less than one G flops uh, to operate. So uh, this is this is uh, executable even on on uh, older phones. Of course, uh, those are for pattern recognition. Uh, currently, on your phones, already working some uh, some sequence and uh, multi-class classification, scalar regression, and all other statistics methods. Because those statistics methods uh, is nothing new. This technology was uh, here. Even before uh, mobile phones, they are quite easy to to process. This is standard statistics. So, uh, but yeah, machine learning is about statistics. So uh, 
in this uh, in this matter, there's nothing new. Uh, there are random forests which uh, some of you uh, probably if, uh, working with machine learning uh, faced and uh, found out that they are way better than uh, neural networks. Uh, but I'm not a big fan uh, of this because they are used to overfit. So. Of course, uh, for sequence, uh, there are multiple networks. Uh, most of them are recurrent. Also, I place this uh, hidden Markov models, uh, which is very old technology. Uh, probably uh, some of you on university was using uh, using a product called Sphinx, which is a speech recognition system. It's quite old, but it's very functional. We use this uh, in our product in. Uh, our uh, Chamberlain product uh, because this is quite nice uh, neural network to to uh, to detect some some uh, commands uh, and it takes very very small amount of resources so so Raspberry Pi can run this and run all our system uh, in the meantime so <laughs> it's quite useful but it is very limited. It also works uh, with uh, with mobiles. There is also nothing, uh, nothing new, nothing in innovative. Thing that is innovative in this matter is uh, that mobiles can run now multiple GFLOPs uh, processing power. Uh, what is uh, the biggest fear in uh, in uh, mobile machine learning? Maybe I will uh, start what is machine learning on mobiles because uh, lots of you uh, think machine learning and uh, think that uh, mobile phones actually produce models. No, they don't produce models. In very rare exceptions uh, like uh, Apple Face ID and uh, uh, and uh, Fingerprint, uh, fingerprint processing. Those are exceptions, and they are really genius uh, technology. But all the other are uh, processed outside your phone, and probably won't be uh, won't be produced, won't be trained on your phone for a while. Because uh, if some one of you try to execute some uh, some uh, some training scripts, would know that. Uh, it requires lots of time, lots of resources, and uh, mobile won't reach this, I think, next 10 or 20 years. So, uh, what is our biggest uh, fear here? Uh, that's true, that machine learning systems usually are associated with large expensive GPUs. I'm talking here about ne neural networks, mostly, uh, because this is the area I'm working uh, with uh, most, uh, and yes, uh, this is very hard to 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 train some model with CPUs. Uh, geniuses from Intel uh, trying hard with uh, MKL MKL library, but I'm not sure they will succeed <laughs> soon, <laughs> or they will change architecture of uh, of uh, processors. Mm. And there is one more problem. Most of our mobile devices using battery. Mm, so, yeah, this is an uh, unbreachable wall probably uh, forever. Also, a bit about, uh, about processing, about the response times of uh, inference model, because uh, the inference is actually what we are executing on our phones. This is not. This is relation like a uh, teacher-student. Uh, you are not. Uh, you are not uh, teaching your model. You are just using the the uh, knowledge of the student on your phone. Uh, and even those are quite uh, quite uh, slow. So, for example, if uh, if the same model executes on Volta 100 one millisecond, the same model, like Inception V3, will uh, will execute uh, 120 milliseconds on 
iPhone X. So, so this is quite slow. Some of you uh, will think that uh, it's way better to execute, uh, to, to build script with multiple of ifs because I've heard uh, multiple times that uh, machine learning is only a couple of ifs. Yes, or not, or maybe. Actually, uh, this is not so simple. Uh, but when, if we would like to generalize this, yes, it is a, a couple of ifs. But this is an example uh, how to uh, use machine learning just to to short your to, to short your work time. I use the same time to produce model using uh, uh, long short term memory uh, algorithm which was trained over the data from uh, from OpenPost and Coco uh, train set. And I uh, spent the same amount of time to produce an uh, algorithm detecting uh, faults. So if you are falling down, the algorithm is taking data from OpenPost, uh, for, from OpenPost uh, matrix and uh, detecting if you have fallen uh, on the floor or, or not. These are real, real results, uh, so the, my spaghetti code, uh, which I spent over eight hours, uh, is 540 lines, plus because uh, it is not finished yet. And uh, LSTM, which has only 10 lines, uh, was training eight hours. So in this case, uh, we reached uh, higher, higher uh, accuracy using machine learning than spaghetti code. Of course you can combine this. It's quite a quite nice solution, but still it's very, very slow. It runs only six uh, frames per second, so it's very slow. It was running on a better system. It was running on uh, NVIDIA TK1. It is comparable to, to phones, uh, but it contains GPU that, uh, that we can use. So, yeah. As I said, mobile devices has multiple limitations. This is a huge problem in this area. I think uh, it won't be solved for, for a while because uh, when you are trying to, to, to produce some models, to use them, you need to keep in your uh, head that uh, it is disabled, so a bit. Maybe it's uh, quite not nice uh, word for this, but it is very limited. For example, a uh, normal inception model uh, with 1,000 1, classes uh, is up to two, 200 megabytes, and this is relatively small for for uh, deep learning model in uh, image processing in this case. So uh, limiting the number of classes is one of uh, one of approaches that. Uh, allows you to run, run this on mobile, but uh, still it also causes that uh, you won't be able to uh, to do whatever you want. Also, you, you can't process large batches of data because your GPU in your phone uh, is not strong, strong enough. If you would uh, try to process, for example, a batch of uh, 16 images on your phone, it would take fewer even more seconds, or even uh, you will reach uh, out of memory exception. This is quite uh, quite often because because of it, of this you you are able to process one image uh, at a time, not like on embedded systems. For example, uh, on NVIDIA TX2 you can process uh, 1632 uh, images at one time in one batch and the processing time is less than 20 milliseconds when uh, on your phone you are able only just to process one image and uh, with five, six or even ten uh, longer time. So yeah, this is still a big problem. When you are uh, trying to, to use your mobile to execute uh, 
deep learning models. You have, yeah, usually you are using uh, optimized uh, models. So, uh, for example, SqueezeNet or uh, ShuffleNet. They are quite nice, sure, but uh, they are able to, to, to be trained up to maybe, I don't know, 90%. Uh, this is uh, max I, uh, I uh, was able to train. And after this, there is nothing. And probably uh, this, co this is causing that uh, you won't rely on your model totally, because if your product fails once on 10 execution, who would use it? Probably, yeah, everyone would be upset because you are, for example, scanning your Mac and uh, your, your uh, algorithm says it's computer. Nope. There's nothing to, to and it's quite, to, quite hard to improve this because <coughs> those optimized models are as they are. So the only uh, way is, uh, is to increase computational power and use better models. In this case, I'm still talking about, uh, about image processing because, uh, as I said, there are, there are multiple uh, other uh, algorithms that are, that are running on your phone all the time, all the regression. When, when you are typing uh, your text, they are different. You, you have some uh, memory in your uh, memory of words which you executed some time ago. This is old technology because uh, your phones are, uh, are learning yourself. So this is, these are regression models that was used uh, a while ago and was developed uh, years, uh, years before before first uh, machine learning framework. Uh, was created, so uh, that's that's the machine learning that you can rely on your phone, and there is no innovation. Of course, uh, you would be able to produce some some models that you could use. For example, Inception V3 could reach even 97% uh, of. Uh, 97% of uh, accuracy, but still it requires lots of time and resources to produce such models. So in this area, I think uh, this technology is still too young to, uh, to be used for video processing. And, uh, and it's quite uh, used for a long time in uh, other areas. So even uh, I, I heard uh, last time that uh, some company was able to implement WaveNet, Google WaveNet, uh, on local device. This is huge, uh, huge step forward because for now, uh, if someone of you uh, was using uh, was using uh, Deep Speech API of Google would know that uh, it was going through the whole crowd processing and uh, it was a bit in inaccurate but uh, but it works well yeah so implementing those uh, outside cloud locally is really huge uh, it's really huge step forward what devices uh, can I use which which devices would work uh, with uh, my AI? For iOS, uh, you could uh, check which devices uh, support uh, ML Core or in future ML Core 2 because uh, Apple created their own framework to, to work with AI. This is quite nice. They, uh, they give you some nice a API, uh, they give you set of tools, they give you Face ID, which is genius, but there is a hack in Face ID that you uh, probably, if you try to, to uh, implement this on, for example, uh, Samsung or Xiaomi or whatever, you will fail because they are using depth camera to, uh, to build your model. So that's why they are able to, 
to uh, train your model on foam because of yeah simple hack they, they are using a fourth uh, dimension so uh, your face is, is uh, unique enough to to do only a few iterations over in iOS uh, it is simple for older versions uh, I would recommend to use TensorFlowLite so it is possible but th they officially does not support uh, ML Core but uh, in Android this, there is no simple solution because uh, each time you need to profile your model this is very complicated because uh, profiling model is uh, <laughs> running actually a specific tool in terms of low light and uh, calculating how much GFLOPs it needs. It can be extrapolated uh, quite easily with linear extrapolation, so uh, you could uh, you could do this. So, which framework? Uh, there is no ML core because ML core is not uh, is not uh, machine learning uh, framework. This is only a framework for execution, so it only consumes model. They, have, they don't have their own uh, training API. Uh, I won't uh, go over all, all uh, frameworks because this is subject for two different productions. Uh, I will stay with Keras and uh, TensorFlow because they give you most tools to to process over iOS and uh, and uh, uh, Android, and the re the next reason is because they have uh, most con contributors on GitHub. They have uh, a few times more than MXNet and uh, and Gluon. Uh, how to plan your training workflow? This is yeah, this is very. Uh, funny uh, funny thing because uh, a while ago I was uh, talking with uh, I was talking with uh, someone from Amazon that was working on Alexa and did you know that uh, they are listing random uh, random uh, things from Alexa and they are retraining model with uh, manually uh, manually validated data so this is they are actually hearing uh, what you are talking to your Alexa, and probably this is, there is some. This is something inside uh, uh, inside uh, your uh, your rights, which you are uh, which you are uh, setting when you are buying product. But yeah, there are a few steps uh, that you need to that you need to uh, keep. You, you need to keep in mind that uh, iterative. Collecting data from from uh, mobiles and retraining your model is the only way that your mobile model will provide any uh, any accuracy than 80, 70, 60 percent. Of there is quite nice I API in uh, TensorFlow that allows uh, to run you uh, uh, that allows to run you your model on mobile. You can freeze your graph, so you are uh, making uh, variables to constants uh, and optimize for inference. So uh, you are removing uh, from your model uh, some redundant, redundant uh, layers that are used only for training. This is very useful and very nice because it can improve your, uh, your performance even 70%. And here is uh, the reason why I recommended to use Keras and TensorFlow, because uh, those uh, two frameworks uh, are compatible in both systems. I'm not including um, uh, Windows on phone, Windows Phone because yeah, they they don't support anything officially. So uh, Keras. Keras is importable via iOS very, very uh, easy way. Uh, you're just loading to ML Core Keras model, so there is no much work in theory. 
but sometimes uh, there are unsupported layers, so uh, you need to still uh, convert this uh, convert this to to original TensorFlow uh, to original TensorFlow model, uh, to TensorFlow like model using freeze and optimize, and then with uh, the OCO tool. In theory, it sounds great. It sounds easy and it sounds like a fun, but but the reality is quite disappointing. When you are trying to convert your uh, models, especially when they are uh, custom models, you need to prepare yourself to fail a few times at least, because this is still very young technology and this is technology full of, bu full of bugs and uh, still many unsupported operations. And what are our results? Low accuracy, battery draining, first kernel allocation which can take, if you, your model is huge, it can take uh, even a few seconds. It eats all your RAM from <laughs> your device and your expectations fail very badly. So, yeah, at this way, I'm not very happy with using this technology. Uh, but the testers are happy because they can test and they can uh, live their adventure. Uh, this is a very nice catch for, for uh, your team because uh, when you will say someone that uh, hey, you are going to write very boring tests for my uh, application. Okay, I'll do this. Hey, you are going to train artificial intelligence. Yeah, and this, this is uh, what they feel. They, they feel adventure. So, yeah, until they train your model first time, uh, after this, it would be harder to, to motivate them. But, yeah. You, you would have uh, some nice trained model because this this uh, process takes lots of time, many iterations. And so, uh, as I said, I'm uh, also a performance tester, so this is one of my, uh, my uh, main areas. So, how about performance? I'm comparing to N NVIDIA SBC TX2 because it is size of uh, uh, mobile device uh, like uh, your iPhone or something like this and yeah those times are even not close to uh, to custom crafted uh, SBC for machine learning even on uh, on paper iPhone X uh, claims that they have uh, 500 G flops processing power hmm. maybe I'm not sure about this SBC NVIDIA TX2 uh, has, uh, has uh, one and a half teflops, teraflops, but still it, uh, it, it should be linear, but still it, it isn't. So, how, uh, how we should treat this technology? For now, I think uh, you, don't, uh, you, you shouldn't depend on this. So developing products uh, with, uh, with this uh, technology is too young, in my opinion. So it should be treated as a younger system. So uh, only for simple tasks. For example, you can uh, collect some data from phone uh, to build uh, real-time processing face recognition uh, from CCTV in home automation like we did in uh, Chamberlain. Uh, this saves lots of time. Also, also uh, building such systems is quite hard because I don't know if you know that uh, CCTV face recognition system in Great Britain is only 6% accuracy. So uh, they are searching for convicts in this, but uh, yeah. This is only 6% and 94% of fails. So collecting those data is uh, quite a nice usage. I was looking for uh, true value uh, where uh, the image processing, where, where, the, uh, where this technology can be used, where uh, their fails can, uh, 
can be forgiven and uh, where it can uh, really produce quite nice product and it is augmented reality. This is really thing that uh, I think uh, this technology fits for now because in the future when it will be more reliable I think uh, it will be applicable to more uh, areas but for now uh, developing uh, such product like scanning some uh, some things in shop, uh, printing uh, some promotions and uh, things like this. I think it's, uh, that's a uh, target uh, real value of, of uh, this uh, technology. Uh, also in games, of course, there is, uh, there is uh, uh, at least one framework uh, that I'm aware of that is starting to use in machine learning with augmented reality. Uh, so, uh, yeah, this is uh, quite a good idea. So, what is conclusion? I think uh, we should stick in product development if we would like to have some nice AI product, custom crafted for a customer, for example, uh, Smart City or, uh, or uh, home automation or self-driving cars or even uh, just uh, helping driving cars I think uh, we should rely still on uh, a bit uh, older we need to take a step back until this uh, technology will be mature enough to provide us nice results until this uh, I think uh, I think it's good to use uh, SBC because they are small and of course, uh, of course, cloud is also nice, but it is very expensive, and you should transfer uh, as much uh, costs to your customer uh, as you can. Of course, there will be always a dilemma to go local, go cloud. Why? There's simple. There is a simple reason for that because if you will force customers to send you uh, their data you can use those data. You can uh, build your own general model, high-end model. You can, uh, yeah, you can do whatever you want because in general models, there is no GDPR because th these data are not, uh, are not uh, providing strictly to identify yourself. So you are able to, to do really nice big data uh, and mobile devices are really treasury of information. Did you even know that uh, from, uh, from acceleration sensor from your phone, you are even uh, able to, uh, to recognize what action are you currently doing? If you are driving a, a bike, if you are running, if you are sitting, if you are whatever. So your phones, contains information about everything about you. So if you are on the bright side of uh, AI development, you would go local, you would try to, to keep those data on, uh, on phones to prevent your customers uh, from spreading it over the world and uh, doing like recent Google and uh, Facebook and such other problems. So, anyone has uh, any question to this subject? Because probably uh, some of you uh, disagree with me. Mr. Ross, and I have a question to you. Can you please compare um, energy use between uh, NVIDIA TX and uh, uh, mobile phones? Can we use NVIDIA with uh, battery like uh, external device with some BLE Wi Fi uh, data communication, like external device for video processing? 
Okay, that's quite a nice question because uh, I was uh, thinking about this and uh, Nvidia TX2 is consuming 14 uh, watts of energy when uh, your mobile at max, as I remember, iPhone X is taking max 3 watts, 3, 3 and a half. So yes, uh, mobiles are way more efficient in, uh, in energy usage, but uh, still, I think uh, that uh, in this case, using uh, using SBC only as a product like uh, standing in your fo in your home, like in our. Uh, in our home automation or like in a local smart city which we are going to build soon uh, I think this is a way more a way more better idea than moving this to the phones because when you will execute uh, execute your algorithms um, for example MPS uh, to, uh, so um, uh, course of uh, iPhone if you try to, to run uh, the continuous stream, it would eat your entire battery very, very fast. So I think uh, until we will find out, develop or find out some better way to, to process those data or to develop some more efficient batteries, I think until this uh, uh, there is no much choice. Thanks. You can also use the one there. Okay. Now who's gonna be faster? Okay. Okay, so I have a uh, hypothetical problem, uh, for instance, if we wanted to uh, recognize some letters on the side and uh, there are some marks, words on the side, uh, is it able to use uh, the machine learning to um, retrieve the words? Words? Yeah. Uh, retrieve the words, marked words uh, from the side in a picture. Mark of words from the side of picture? Or? Uh, yeah, we, we have a side in a book. Okay. Yeah, and we have some marked words. And uh, we want to use some tool to. Yeah, that's quite simple because words. actually, the uh, uh, examples of. Uh, one of the examples is NIST uh, package. So in NIST package, you have uh, already provided some uh, some tools to recognize uh, specific uh, uh, letters in a, because you are talking about uh, speech to uh, text to image text to text. Yes. 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 This is quite easy and uh, and nice uh, example that how you can use uh, pre-trained model. On your so phone. it's able to use only locally on the device? Yes. Oh, okay. That's great. Those models uh, are quite small because the uh, NIST package uh, uses uh, very basic uh, basic uh, neural networks. They so, so the user is able to mark some words uh, in a book and we can just make a photo and... Uh, mark... Uh, I think it's uh, quite easy to... to oh, okay. because uh, this is... Uh, this is nice example yes. uh, how, how we could use it. Yes, great to know, thanks. Okay, does anyone have uh, some more questions? Do you have some question? No. Okay, so then thank you very much. <laughs>